Once you see the contents of this notebook, you're going to want one. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. I was blown away when Austin KC2SAH sent this field manual in the mail to me. And we're going to go over the modules that it includes inside this field manual in just a second. It is uh, included or put inside of a Write in the Rain notebook. That notebook measures roughly six by eight inches. And everything inside of it is printed on right in the rain paper. Now, if you're not familiar with right in the rain paper, it is super water resistant. It can get wet, be dried off, and be usable once again. Let's jump over to the workbench so I can show you guys all of the modules that this field guide includes. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to give you a few closing thoughts. All right, so just inside the notebook cover, we've got several uh, things going on here. We've got some uh, measurement conversions, both U.S. to metric and metric to U.S. Uh, down below that, we've got some English linear measurements. And then we've got map scales down here, both English and metric. So that's on the inside cover. Over here, let's see if I can get that reflection off there. We've also got an inch ruler on this side. And if we flip all the way over to the other side... We've got a uh, ruler for centimeters over here and a handy little pocket in the back that you might make use of. So let's start taking a look at some of the different modules that he's sent to me. And remember, guys, all of this is printed on right in the rain paper, so it's going to be super durable. First off, there's a thank you uh, over here in the left hand side. And then starting on the right hand side, what he has included in mine is a radio reference manual for the FT5D. So let's see, that one's the FT5, the FT5 on the left, and right again. Uh, again, left and right printed pages, and a full left page, but only a partial uh, right page finishing up. But he does leave uh, some space here for notes, so that if we wanted to jot down any of our own notes, we could do that as well. In addition to that, he's also included for me a radio reference manual for the FX4CR radio. Uh, so another one of the radios that I own. So I'm uh, looking forward to having this cheat sheet available. I haven't been able to use that radio enough, so I probably am going to need this cheat sheet. And then finally for me, he included the Yezu FT857 uh, reference. Now, the next page that he's got here is Off-Grid Weather Data Repository and how to request that data. So you get instructions right up here at the top as to how to request that data. And then we get a list of the description over on the left-hand column. Uh, we get the URL that we're going to need to use in the right-hand column, or I'm sorry, the center column. And the right-hand column is going to give us the size in kilobytes. And that's very handy to know before you make a particular request is how large that file is going to be, or at least how large you can kind of expect it to be. You will see some of them listed here as VAR for variable. But most of them, the vast majority anyway, give you a pretty good guesstimate as to how large that file is going to be. And again, when we're working with WinLink, larger files can take quite a bit of time. So that's a whole list of data there. Uh, then on the next page, uh, we've got just a blank document where we can make some notes of additional things we might want to request if we stumble across those. In addition to that, he also has a complete WinLink catalog listed out here. Again, category on the left, uh, what we request is in the center. And the description is over here in the right-hand column. And let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, looks like six pages, uh, five and a half pages of that data. So a complete listing of everything that you can get from the WinLink catalog looks to be in uh, this cheat sheet. And that's really helpful if you need to make a request while you're out in the field. There's also down here uh, below that some data request instructions, some grid parameters, and uh, how to do cell docs request. Cell docs is really cool because you can request data from just about any website 
and CellDocs will strip that data down to just a text format and send it back to your WinLink email address. So if you're not familiar with CellDocs, definitely check into that. Now let's take a look on the next page, and we've just got some common frequencies uh, that you might be interested in. So we've got NOAA weather radio right up at the top. We've got marine radio uh, going all the way down the rest of that page. Flipping through that, we've got all of the CB bands listed out here on the left. We've got FRS followed by GMRS, which actually goes on over into this one. Here uh, looks like some aviation, uh, common aviation frequencies, and then uh, ham radio is below that. Uh, and then the ham radio section also continues on to this next page. Another really handy module that he's included is a list of APRS commands. So he explains to you what uh, each command is, gives you a short uh, description of that, and how to utilize it. So uh, let's see, there's a whole page of APRS, looks like two pages of APRS commands that you can use. We do get a band plan printed out here so that uh, if you need a quick reference for that, you have it. Uh, looks like time zones are on this page. Next up, we've got a module for building dipoles. Uh, so links, uh, the links that you would need to cut the wire for quarter wave, half wave, and full wavelengths. And that goes from 2 meter all the way to uh, 160 meters. So good reference guide to have there. Uh, line of sight distance in miles. It's a reference chart you can use if that's something that you needed. Uh, we've got standard Q codes, we've got temperature conversions, phonetic alphabet, uh, and Morse code, uh, what you would use for that. So uh, right here for I, you'll see the did it, uh, and then it carries on for the rest of the alphabet. Uh, we do have an RST system guide down here you know, when you're giving signal reports, if you needed to reference that. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Man, this thing is packed full of information. So we've got time conversion charts uh, from UTC into all of the different U.S. time zones here in this. Now this is pretty neat. He's got some optimal solar panel tilt and azimuth angle uh, calculations for North America. Just a quick little section uh, down here in the bottom for that one. We also have a section for emergency water purification here. Uh, let's see, we've got a local repeater list. So he pulled repeaters in my local area and printed those out so that I would have a quick reference of that offline should I find myself in need of that information. So it looks like a full page printed front and back of that. And I'm assuming he could customize that for anyone uh, that was wanting to have that same information for their area. And then we've got some blank pages back here in the back so we can list out more uh, repeaters and frequencies. And then I believe last but not least back here. Oh, nope, I forgot about this. He also gives you a radio log. Uh, so a log sheet for contacts that you might make. And then I believe, yep, that's the last of it. He does include some blank notebook pages back here in the back. So you've got a few of them. I'm sure you could get more if you wanted it, either ordering through him or ordering from Amazon. Either way, useful just to have these blank pages to make notes while you're in the field. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I was absolutely blown away with this manual. I did have some suggestions for him uh, to go along and maybe expand upon this idea. Maybe he can include different modules that people that operate in the field might be interested in. So maybe it's basic survival guides or basic uh, plant identification, basic first aid. You kind of get the idea there. There's a lot of different modules that uh, could be included in this that might interest people that operate in the field on a regular basis. The only criticism that I have uh, with this particular field guide has nothing to do with the guide itself, rather these aging eyes. This thing does measure six by eight inches, and I either need to put a Fresnel lens in there with this particular field guide, or I made the suggestion that maybe he in, uh, includes a larger size, uh, say an eight and a half by 11, or maybe at least an eight by 10. 
Uh, not everyone's going to want something larger because that's obviously going to take up more space and be more weight. But for those of us whose eyes are not quite what they used to be, it might be worth a little bit of extra weight to make that a little bit more readable. Again, that's not a criticism of the field guide, just my eyesight isn't what it used to be. What do you guys think? What modules could you think of that might be included in this? I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on that if you can leave it down in the comments below. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.